And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, indeed. How was your weekend? It was quite good. It's getting chilly again, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm warming up inside of my house, which is uh, <laughs> nice and toasty. <laughs> yeah, nice and toasty, cozy. All right. Thank you for joining us, Adam. Uh, in case you didn't get the memo, it, it is colder this morning. So for those, yeah. for those of you guys who are just getting ready for work, be sure to bundle up. Mm-hmm. All right. It wasn't just a busy weekend for us. It was a busy weekend for, it seems, a lot of the world leaders who were present in Cambodia for the ASEAN summit. Let's start there. This is our first keyword of the day. Three-way summit. So the leaders of South Korea, the U.S. and Japan met on the sidelines of the ASEAN summit in Cambodia. It has our attention. What did they discuss? Right. Well, they vowed to reinforce, first off, extended deterrence against North Korea, and they urged the international community to abide by sanctions, fitting because there are a lot of world leaders there. Uh, In a joint statement issued to the press after the meeting, the three warned against a seventh nuclear test by North Korea, stressing that if Pyongyang carries out another test, it would face a strong and firm response from the international community. Joe Biden also stressed the trilateral partnership with South Korea and Japan to respond to North Korea's continued provocations. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida also warned against North Korean provocations as well. He said that Japan planned to respond resolutely by further strengthening the relationship between the, uh, with the two countries. Uh, the three sides said they would coordinate sanctions against North Korea and work together to close gaps in the international sanctions regime to ensure all relevant sanctions were fully enforced. Uh, But meanwhile, they also stressed that dialogue remains open, calling on the regime to return to negotiations. And the three countries also said they will work together to strengthen deterrence. Mm -hmm. Biden reaffirmed that the U.S. commitment to reinforce extended deterrence to South Korea and Japan would only get stronger. To strengthen deterrence, the leaders agreed to share North Korean missile warning data in real time among the three nations fitting as uh, North Korea has increased its frequency uh, of missile tests in Mm -hmm. recent weeks. Um, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan also told reporters aboard Air Force One that the three leaders planned a coordinated response if North Korea carries out another nuclear test, but declined to provide details. Biden also said he discussed with Yoon and Kishida expanding coordinated support for Ukraine in the war with Russia maintaining uh, peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait and working toward common goals of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Biden, meanwhile, is meeting Chinese President Xi Jinping in person today for the first time since taking office ahead of the G20 summit in Bali. Mm. U.S. concerns over Taiwan, Russia's war in Ukraine, North Korea's nuclear ambitions will likely top his agenda as well as other Uh, agenda items as well. That will be a closely watched meeting, of course, because we all know how Biden's stance is uh, against China. Mm. There's been a lot of friction between the two countries. Meanwhile, President Yoon has also arrived in Bali to attend the G20, so eyes will be on his uh, meetings there and sideline meetings as well. All right. So the G20 summit coming up on Tuesday. We'll keep close tabs on the agenda. Meanwhile, let's move on to our second keyword of the day. Yoon meets Biden. So Yoon and Biden have held separate talks in Cambodia as expected, issuing a warning against North Korea as well as discussing the Inflation Reduction Act. Right, so the comments on, uh, in regards to North Korea are pretty much similar to what they were in the trilateral summit with Fumio Kishida. Uh, but they both said that uh, two countries will respond with overwhelming force using all available means should North Korea use nuclear weapons. Uh, the two leaders also shared their serious concern over North Korea's recent kind of unprecedented and more aggressive provocations. And they agreed to maintain and strengthen what they called the seamless coordination and firm combined defense posture between the allies. Yoon stressed the need to demonstrate to the North that there's nothing to gain from its nuclear and missile programs. Mm. And he also stressed the need to strengthen the U.S. extended deterrence commitment to South Korea in a practical and bold way. Biden was cited as reaffirming the U.S.'s ironclad defense and extended deterrence commitment to South Korea 
and called for continuing close coordinate uh, consultations rather on ways to strengthen extended deterrence. Uh, regarding the Interna uh, Inflation Reduction Act, Yoon said, quote, a consultation channel between Korea and the U.S. to discuss the IRA is operating closely, possibly uh, hinting that uh, there are, have been uh, more discussions on the issue between the two countries. In response, Biden told Yoon, Korean companies have contributed greatly to the U.S. economy in areas such as automobiles and electric car batteries, and he added that in consideration of these points, measures to implement the IRA should be discussed. He has been uh, known to have said kind of what has been positive responses in regards to IRA in mm. uh, the IRA in previous uh, encounters with Yoon. But mm. practically speaking, in the US, nothing really much has been done in terms of any amendments or possible amendments to the IRA. So mm. we'll have to see what those comments by Biden actually turn into. Right. Um, and Biden added that in, uh, uh, sorry, Yoon noted that as downward pressure on the global economy is increasing, he expects closer economic cooperation between Korea and the US as well. Also, meanwhile, Yoon met with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on the sidelines separately. They agreed to continue discussions for a quick resolution of pending issues between the two countries, namely uh, the forced labor compensation issue and other historical disputes as well. Uh, they also con agree to continue communication at the leader level also. Mm. Let's move on to uh, uh, something that we have been talking about for weeks on end. No, uh, I suppose, solution. Um, and in fact, experts point to a continuation in our, well, gloomy prospects. This is our third keyword of the day. Gloomy economy. I apologize. I'm like stumbling through all my sentences this morning. It's <laughs> um, Monday. Okay. So a recent survey shows that about half of economic experts believe that Korea's economy is showing signs reminiscent of the 2008 global financial crisis, if not worse. Tell us the details. So there's some uh, ominous uh, projections coming out from the survey, which was conducted by the Korea Enterprises Federation on 204 economic professors across the country and asked them about the current economic situation as well as next year's outlook. Now, 52.7% of respondents said they saw the current situation similar or even worse than that of 2008. Of them, 227.5% uh, said the situation was similar. Nearly 19% said it wasn't as bad during mm. the Asian financial crisis, but worse than 2008, while 9% said it was similar or worse than 1997 when the Korea had to get a bailout from the IMF. Um, over 57% said the main cause for the slump was the Ukraine conflict, US-China tensions and high energy prices, so a lot of geopolitical issues there. Mm. Other reasons cited included Korea's dependence on imports, as well as belated policies to rein in the economy, as well as laws and policies that these experts deemed weren't on par with the global standard. Now, as for next year's outlook, over 66% of respondents said the uh, growth rate would be between 1.5% to 2%, uh, nearly 54% said the local economy would start to recover in 2024, so not next year. 24% mm. said it would bounce back in 2025 as well. Only 22% said the economy would start to rebound next year. As for inflation, 47% said inflation would peak in the first quarter of 2023. Um, meanwhile, the U.S. inflation rates inched down in October, increasing expectations that the Federal Reserve will increase interest rates by less next month than in recent meetings. Mm. Whether that will cause positive ripple effects here in Korea remains to be seen, but there is some optimism, <laughs> some being the key word there. It seems that with the economic experts divided, it's not a single conclusion, is it? But mm. like you said, some optimism, some prospects of inflation peaking in early 2023. So let's wait and mm. see how that pans out. So. Let's turn our attention to our fourth keyword of the day. Itaewon death toll. So there has been one more death in connection to the Itaewon tragedy, bringing the death toll now to a total of 158. What's the latest, Adam? 
Right, unfortunately, an additional death uh, was a Korean woman in her 20s. This came after a Korean soldier actually was pronounced dead last Friday. That was the first time in 10 days that the death toll from the disaster had increased. Also, uh, out of 196 injured, 10 are actually still in hospital. Uh, The others have returned home. Um, Also, some other unfortunate news. Two senior officials, including a police officer and a Seoul City government employee, were actually found dead in suspected suicides on Friday uh, amid continued investigations into the uh, Itaewon tragedy. A lot of officials have been held accountable and are under investigation Mm. uh, for what has been widely assessed as a lack of response or belated response to the uh, disaster. Um, Meanwhile, the presidential office has reportedly launched a legal review of state reparations for the victims of the Itaewon uh, crush. A presidential official told reporters that a swift and thorough investigation into the case is needed to fulfill the nation's legal responsibility for the incident. So basically saying that we need to get more answers and results of investigations to find out who is accountable Mm. and whether uh, and who is um, responsible for such reparations and compensations, if any. Uh, The official said, though, that the government will take responsibility for the accident to uh, the bereaved families uh, in various aspects. Uh, Meanwhile, the legal side is also taking action as well. Lawyers for a Democratic Society said last week that it has set up a task force on the Itaewon crowd crush. The Korean Bar Association reportedly plans to set up a special committee to support the bereaved families Mm. uh, for a lawsuit against the government in seeking compensation uh, as well. So more repercussions from the disaster continuing. All right, then let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Updated vaccines. So beginning today, Pfizer's bivalent COVID-19 vaccines uh, to tackle Omicron subvariants particularly will be included in the winter vaccination program. Tell us the details of who is eligible and what has changed. Right. Well, the uh, booster dose of the BA.4 and BA.5 bivalent vaccines by Pfizer will be administered to people aged 18 and older who were vaccinated before July. A kind of four month window is being recommended between them. Uh, The move came as the BA.5 variant of COVID-19 has become the dominant strain in Korea, taking up around around, uh, 91% of total infections just in the first week of this month. Experts say the latest booster doses are 2.6 times more effective against the BA.4 and BA.5 variants than existing vaccines. Mm -hmm. The government had previously begun providing updated vaccines developed by Moderna to people in high-risk groups, such as those aged 60 and above, as well as workers and residents in nursing homes. Mm. The expansion also comes as the spread of the coronavirus has apparently stopped, uh, slowing down with signs of a potential resurgence this winter. Uh, The KDCA predicts the country may see up to 200,000 daily infections in the winter months citing waning immunity levels among the population and the emergence of these new variants. Mm. Uh, While encouraging the public to actively receive an updated booster, the KDCA said it will announce on Wednesday Mm. detailed predictions on the winter virus situation, as well as the government's response measures against the resurgence also. Thank you very much, Anna, for today's coverage. Have a safe day. Stay warm. I'll see you tomorrow. You too. Stay warm. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.